Lincolnshire Spirit Seekers Podcast. Boom. Brownford Poltergeist. In the winter of 1887, in a cottage of Bramford near Itchwich, something very strange was happening. According to local reports, a poltergeist had taken up residence in a humble abode alongside widow Parker, her grown-up son, by her first marriage, Thomas Franklinton, two other children, Ellen Parker, 13, Cornelius Parker, 11, and bedridden woman, Miss Felsgate. The unusual occurrences began with throwing of stones and dirt outside a house on their ramps and other noises were heard and items of furniture started to move on their own accord, accord inside the house. Witness claimed that the little girl, Elaine, would eventually be fitted, lifted bodily into the air or struck terribly blind. Kettles of of Table and sofa moved by a visible hand, and terrifying knives would fly from cupboards and stick in Elaine's hair. A family were frightened for the safety of the younger children. Elaine was packed off to an aunt's house in Stone Market. Mr. Jeffreys. What happened next was recounted by her husband Robert in a letter to East England Daily Times on December fourteenth, eighteen eighty seven. The children came to my house in Mo- on Monday, November 26th in the evening, he wrote. Nothing happened till the Wednesday night following, when rats came out my front door. No one was there, closing the front door as soon as I could. I got in. Rats came inside the house till the children went to bed, sleeping with her grandmother. The child went to bed, sleeping with her grandmother. As the child went upstairs, rats followed her. I went on and went on in the room. That was all that all. That was all that happened that night. Next night, in the room where she sat about seven o'clock, was annoyed by hearing rats again. The room where the child, my wife and grandchildren's grandmother was sitting. No one else was there. This went on until the child and the grandmother went to bed. Rats followed them up, both upstairs. I heard a tremendous noise. Mr. Jeffrey went upstairs, saw something moving about and called me. I went up and found them in a terrible fright. I got them downstairs for an hour when nothing happened but a few rats came in from where I did not know. They went to bed again about 11. My wife went up as soon as the child and grandmother were in bed. I went up. There was no one in the room then but my wife, myself, and I was in bed. As soon as I went in, the washstand fell on me. No one be, being near it but myself, next I saw clothes chest weighing at least seven stones for the contents, jumping about on the floor. I put it in the, the, its place several times. Then the chairs and all the boobles in the room seemed alive. Even the brass knob screwed on the bedpost was taken off the dash across the room. All this time the child was in bed and the light room in the Light, light in the room. The disturbances went on till about twelve o'clock that night, when they all clearly ceased. This is what I witnessed myself. But I must mention that in my absence, my wife, my two sons, my neighbour, Mrs. Reed, saw very much the same things as I did. But I leave them to speak for themselves, confining myself to that what I saw and heard myself. I have been a resident of Stone Market twenty-eight years. And I'm sure my friends will credit me as a truthful man. In January 1988, a member of Society of Psychological Research, Frank Podmore, visited the family to investigate was convinced Mrs. Parker's honesty. He discovered that the phenomenon occurred only in the presence of a little girl, Elaine, but unable to discover any motive for the fraud of her part. A police constable, Prince Sergeant Leakes, claimed that he seen Ellen trapping on the window, and schoolmistress claimed that Claudius, Cornelius had uh, confessed to e- level e- trickery, but the account from Mrs. Jeffrey cannot be explained, nor can that of the other witness. <laughs>